What's up, guys? Uh, what's up, Pylon Black? What's up, Louis? Um, so again, this is the last giveaway stream. I think there's five hours left in the giveaway. Uh, let's see here. If you're not signed up, okay, that's that's good. That's real nice. That's exactly what I wanted. <laughs> What's up, Stephen Ward? How's it going? How's everybody doing today? Here we go. This should be better. So if you want to go and get yourself uh, signed up right now, that's the link to the giveaway right now. And yeah, uh, this video, again, obviously by the title, Airburst Advice for Beginners. So I'm just gonna be giving some advice uh, just on a beginner level. If you, if you happen to be the one that wins the airbrush care package, um, and you know, maybe it's your first airbrush and stuff like that, uh, this video will give you a good idea of where to start. So, one thing I always recommend for beginners is paper towels. And oh, there it is. The paper towel roll. Uh, they sell these. I think this is the Viva brand. Oh, these are. Yeah, no, these are the Viva brand. I got a Bounty brand over there too. But uh, as a beginner, I cannot stress uh, how easy it is to practice on paper towels so I've taken some paper towels right cut a few squares off the roll and you could use tape also if you're a beginner I recommend you get yourself some nice masking tape masking tape is always good <clears throat> what's up Leon what's up Quastar uh, what up Bobby um, so right some tapes always good uh, if you want to step up your game a little bit, I recommend getting some spray adhesive. Now this is the Permatex, um, I think it's like Walmart brand, uh, but they also, the 3M sells the Super 77, and that's probably what I would recommend. What's up, Abismael? What's up, Justin? Um, so we're going to use some of this spray adhesive here, and we're going to stick our paper towels. You don't need a whole bunch of this stuff. Just a couple quick sprays. Gets it nice and sticky. And it'll give you a nice flat surface to work on. So that nice and smooth. You could just stretch it out. So for beginners, this is paper towels are real nice because they're inexpensive. Um, right, so you could get you know rolls, and a roll will last you you know quite a few practice sessions. They're good for cleaning up, and, and you know I can just I just can't stress enough uh, you know how good paper towels are to have. So uh, yeah, so obviously with the set that I'm giving away, I've included the. Revolution CR. Now, I am obviously you guys have seen all the reviews. I could have included any airbrush I wanted. Really, literally, I could have included any airbrush I wanted. Um, there's a reason I picked the Revolution CR. So, I picked the Iwata for one because their their precision and quality is is pretty much unmatched. Everybody else tries to match up to the quality of Iwata, but Iwata, Iwata oh, like owns a lot of the manufacturing plants that make a lot of the parts and stuff, so they get first picks on all the parts and all the, you know, on all the stuff. They've probably been around longer than most airbrush brands, and uh, they understand precision, and they do make revisions to their airbrushes every few years, even if it's just to make the most minute 
detail, you know, like the, the most minute difference. Um, so quality is the reason I picked it. Um, also, it has a 0.5 millimeter needle. So with a 0.5 millimeter, meter, <laughs> with a 0 millimeter needle, with a 0.5 millimeter needle, it allows you to spray paints uh, straight out of the bottle, as well as reduce paints and lower your air pressure down. And you know, it'll allow you a good range of work um, with your paint. So I particularly like that. Also, it has a fan cap that you can remove so you can get the dry tip off nice and quick. Uh, that was a killer for a lot of other airbrushes, you know, that didn't have that fan cap that you could just take off. A lot of them don't have that. You have to like use some weird stuff to get it in there and that kind of really sucks. So, you know, this one has the nice Iwata style where you can just clean off the needle, the dry tip, makes it so easy. So that's why I included this airbrush. <sighs> There's different styles of airbrushes, right? So if you're a new airbrush artist and maybe you don't win the giveaway and you're watching this video, um, <clears throat> There's obviously these gravity feed that have the cup attached right to where the needle um, sits. And then there's also these uh, bottom feed here, like this, right? That require a bottle to be attached and ran through. Uh, and it sucks the paint up. Um, typically, I'd recommend a top feed for having better details. So. If you want to have that paint uh, spray immediately and in correct amounts, uh, the top feed's the best. If you're going to be doing t-shirts, shoes, more of that kind of stuff, uh, I would honestly recommend bottom feeds because they have a bigger, you know, bigger bottle. You typically, when you're working on cloth, you don't reduce paints. Again, if you're working on shirts, you don't reduce paints. Uh, you spray it straight out of the bottle, and then you press it, and that's what actually makes the 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 paint set and last, right? So you gotta make sure you go and watch the how to airbrush shirts for beginners all the way through, right? Because a lot of people skip the pressing of the part. Also, a lot of people, you know, just assume that I add reducer to everything and that's not true. If you're gonna be airbrushing on shirts and shoes and stuff like that and you want the paint to last, you do not reduce the paint. You heat set it in and that's what actually sets the paint. <sighs> so, if you're going to be doing a lot of shirts and stuff, I do recommend you use a bottom feed because the non-reduced paint, you'll end up going through more of it. Um, and that's just, you know, nature of the beast. On these, it's nice because you can throw in a little bit of paint in there. You can throw reducer and it's really great for producing works of art like the ones up on my wall. Um, you know, all those. So <clears throat> that's what these are really good for. So I included one of these because you can also spray the sprint, the paint straight out of the bottle. So if you want to do shirts and you want to learn, you know, one of these will work really, really well as well. So what's up, Dennis? What's up, Jesse? What's up, Shrenda? What's up, Dan? Um, so yeah. What kind of paint and thinner do you use? Uh, Shrenda, you need to, you need to educate yourself. <laughs> It's right on the freaking screen. <laughs> um, so anyway, for today's uh, exercise, now that I've explained the airbrush, right? This is a, a quality airbrush. It has a big enough needle. It can spray all the paints. Um, and then speaking of paints, right? So actually, before we pay, spray any paint in here, right? Let's speak of paints. So it's very possible, right, to go out to Walmart and get you this Apple Barrel brand air, you know, paint. I can't even call it airbrush paint because it's not. It's acrylic matte, acrylic paint, quick drying, easy cleanup um, stuff. And we buy these for Violet for her art projects, you know, around the house when she's just painting uh, for stuff. So, <clears throat> um, it's very possible to use this and learn with this and stuff. And uh, the thing is, you'll quickly and very for surely r start running into problems with this paint. Um, for one, you, there is not a reducer for this. So a lot of people resort to using water or some kind of special mixture. Um, 
water is not the same as reducer. I'll say it again. Even for Createx, it, water is not the same as reducer. Reducer flashes, water dries, um, and water takes a long time to dry. Reducer flashes over um, because it's alcohol based and it dries a lot quicker. Um, so that's why I recommend that. Uh, these will also clump up and, and dry within your airbrush. You'll have you'll, you'll just have a really bad time. Okay, I, I've, I've tried it from my experience. And I've, I've even, you know, you could use the Createx reducer with this, but I just, you know, it's not going to last. And to be quite honest with you, um, you know, quality airbrush paint is not that much more expensive. Um, so this little bottle here, you could get them for 50 cents to, to you know, two, I think is 50 cents to a dollar. And then they have certain colors that are, you know, more expensive, you know, a dollar 50 or whatever, you know, but like I said, this will end up causing you a lot of problems uh, you can get createx bottles right in the same size they almost look they almost look exactly the same honestly uh, createx like this and these are about 450 um, to five dollars you know you can see, see them online all the time um, and honestly out of this you'll end up getting a lot more use than if you would this uh, if you get this and you get yourself you know even if it's a small bottle of reducer, this will end up going a lot farther than if you would have to, you know, mess with those other paints. Uh, Createx and every other paint gets dry tip, right? So, but with this, you're gonna get dry tip plus because it's just gonna be drying on top of each on top of each other, right? Yeah. So if, even if you go to Hobby Lobby, like you get that 40% off coupon, you know, it's gonna take you a few trips, a few days, but uh, you know, you're gonna be able to get all the paints you want and like I said these will end up going a lot farther than that cheap stuff and I as a beginner it's better that you learn with something good than you start um, on the wrong track right so you could get a cheap airbrush but if you get a, a cheap airbrush and cheap paint you're gonna have a bad time at least with a cheap airbrush and decent paint you'll get decent sprayage um, from my experience, you know, even the cheap airbrushes can spray good paint um, decently well for a good, you know, a little while before you'll start having problems with them. But with this stuff, you know, <laughs> it's a lot thicker. You, even in the bottom, it's like you can't shake this. So just take these, just throw them out. You don't need that. Get yourself some good paint. Just, I, I can't say that more than once. There's a reason I have all these paints up here. And even if Createx hadn't sent all that, like I still had a pretty good lineup of paints. Um, these ones over here are double stacked because <laughs> there's so much paint that I can't just, you know, line it up nice. Okay, all that being said, <clears throat> for today's exercise and for, you know, a beginner airbrush artist, I would recommend that you start off at about 30 PSI. Um, this is a good starting point, uh, especially for this particular airbrush. And for most top feeds, honestly, 30 PSI is going to probably be on the high end of your spraying, um, you know, on, on your pressure. Um, but from there, it's very easy to turn down your pressure and, you know, add reducer to get the desired effect you want. But for a starter and for the person that wins the giveaway, right, you're going to end up getting just opaque black, opaque white and the transparent um, colors. No reducers. So for today, we're working at 30 PSI. All right. And we're going to just do paint straight out of the bottle here. Now this particular bottle creates is probably a little bit thicker, but it'll be all right just to show you guys today's exercise. So even before you start this, maybe you want to just take your airbrush, run it around, you know, Find out how it works, pull back on the trigger, push down. Make sure your paint's coming out. Yeah, that paint's pretty thick, but it'll work. So, right away, you can see I have dry tip, right? There's, there's black on the needle, and that little bit of black <clears throat> will impede your spray. So, one thing, see paper towels? I like to take a paper towel and just kind of grab it 
right on the needle and pull it back like straight away from the needle. That's the best way I have found to actually remove that dry tip off of there. If you can see now, it's nice and clean and the camera's not gonna focus on that, but <clears throat> you know, that is the best. You see, you see that little bit that I took off of there? Those little bits? That's, that's all. <laughs> That's all it takes for you to have a really bad day of painting, right? So you want to always keep make sure you keep taking that dry tip off. And like I said, I included the revolution so you could take that fan cap off and it's really easy to get to that needle, right? So once you've played around with your airbrush and you've figured out that if you press down, it's for air. And if you pull back, paint comes out, right? So the first rule, the first rule, <laughs> Yes, there's gonna be rules to this. The first rule to airbrushing is always, always push down first. So push down and then you pull back, you get your paint spray and then always let go last, right? So you always move your trigger forward and then you let go of the paint, right? So you be going like this, then you let go of the paint and then you let go of the air. You don't want to, um, what's it called, Call it, cause yourself splatter. So if you're moving across and you have that going and then you just remove like that and then you, you see, you see the needle there? There's like paint hanging on the needle there and wipe it off on here. Look, look at how much paint came off of there, right? So you don't wanna cause that. <clears throat> It'll also cause paint to go up into the nozzle cap Right, so this second part here that comes off, uh, if you get too much paint over your needle, some of that paint will actually start going back into this area. You see, I sprayed and some of it came out right there on that little piece of paper there. Um, that will also cause you a really bad day. So you always, always, always push down first and you always let it go last. Right, so you push down, you spray your stuff, and then you go back forward with your trigger, and then you let it go, right? You don't want to let go of the trigger while you're spraying paint because you'll get paint again around your nozzle, and you'll get it to go back into your nozzle cap, which will cause you lots of trouble, so don't do that. <clears throat> so from there, you're gonna wanna learn how to spray some stuff, right? So I talk a lot about dagger strokes and I've, I've, you know, I could go all day about how you need to learn to airbrush dagger strokes and I still believe that and I am going to include that in this. <clears throat> you wet your tip when I use it. What does that even mean? Uh, but what I'm gonna do is teach you some basic things. So first off is making dots. So you want to, again, push down, get in decently close, maybe a couple inches away, and just give your trigger a nice pull back, and then let it let it go forward and let go of the air. Give yourself a nice little dot, right? Then to make a line, right? So if you want to turn this dot into a line, all you have to know is that lines are just moving dots. So if you can make this dot, you can make a line to match. Um, as long as you keep yourself pretty steady, right, you can make a line to match. Again, <clears throat> it's all going to depend on how you airbrush around, and that's how you're going to get lines, right? Pretty, pretty simple. So a dagger stroke um, becomes when we make this dot or this line go from a thick line to a thin line. And the reason I stress that <clears throat> these are so important is because whenever you're using your airbrush, everything that you paint with an airbrush will fall in the range of this dagger stroke. So if you wanna paint a thick line, you know, or a medium line, or all the way down to a thin line, it's all gonna fit within that dagger stroke. Right? So everything you ever spray will fall within this spray pattern. So it's really good to practice these and know how to perform them um, at different lengths, you know? So if you wanna make shorter ones.
<clears throat> right? So you make long ones, middle ones, shorter ones, shorter, all the way down to the little, little, little rat tails. And uh, like I said, everything you spray will land within that spray pattern. So again, you start off kind of far away, maybe give yourself a good five inches, pull back. And as you go down, you're gonna get closer and slowly move the trigger forward to get that fine line. Start back, pull back, move closer, and release the trigger slowly to the front. And you still have the air going at the end, you let go of the air. That's the dagger stroke. And again, you wanna practice these in different um, lengths, different thicknesses, and you'll end up getting yourself to a point where making lines like this or making different dots or maybe you you have to alternate maybe big dots to little dots and you'll know your mind will pick up on you know your perception of like how far and how close you have to be to achieve the line that you're trying to achieve <clears throat> it's kind of like using a pencil right so when you're using a pencil and you're shading you know after you've done it quite a while, you kind of know to use that pencil a little bit lighter when you're shading. And when you want to make dark areas, you know to push down and push, you know, make it nice and, and, and thick. And that's kind of the same thing here. Uh, so as you get used to it, you'll know when to like it fade it out and when to make it super defined and sharp. Uh, so again, start with some dots and it sounds easier and I make them look easy. Then turn those dots into lines. All right, as best as you can. Right, and then from there, once you get good at making lines, uh, then you can just practice some dagger strokes. And once you're good with that, then you can move into shading, right? Because shading, even though it falls within this, it's kind of a different effect and it takes a little bit of a different um, skill and eye to perform. So, right, you can't just do dagger strokes to shade something. Uh, shading, you actually kind of like have to, you keep your, for one, you keep your airbrush kind of in the same area and you kind of twist your wrist as a way of uh, moving the, you see that? You twist the wrist as you let go of the paint. And then slow there. Start up high and you keep it high. You don't get closer, nothing like that. You kind of just you stay at the same. Even if you want to do it a little bit closer like this. As you notice, I'm not getting closer to my surface. I'm staying far away and I'm just releasing the trigger as I go down to great, give us that nice gradient effect. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you skip the diet exercise and stuff it down the line, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the dots help a lot. A lot of people think it, it doesn't, um, you know, it's just, oh, that's silly. Why would I practice dots? But again, if you practice little dots, right, and then you practice thick dots, I used to do this a lot, which I would go back and forth with the dots. Right, make one big one, one little one, one big one, one little one. And doing this helps your finger develop that back and forth, right? You're, you're pulling back, you're letting go, you're pulling back, letting go, pulling back, letting go as you move um, forward and back. So that, it builds up your finger control for when you're gonna do other stuff, including lettering, including shading, portraits, anything you're gonna do, having the finger control is is probably gonna solve most people's issues with anything. You could work through airbrush problems with proper finger control. <laughs> That's just how it goes. Sometimes your airbrush won't be, you know, maybe running the best maybe there's a, a little speck of paint that just keeps clogging your nozzle and you're just trying to work through it 
Um, and yeah, having good finger control will help with that so that you can just keep working until that little speck sprays out or, or you know, maybe just blows back and, into the paint cup. <clears throat> but developing good finger control is, is key. So after you've done the shading, right? From there, um, it's good to produce an exercise or do something that's gonna really take all these things and turn them into, uh, you know, kind of a piece of art, something you could practice. So I always recommend people do their names. So if, if you're not good at uh, cursive, you could just use regular print. Um, but if you know how to write cursive, then I would recommend doing cursive. And here I'm gonna demonstrate a couple things. I'm gonna just do it in a nice fine line first. Right, so this is kind of basic, right? With an airbrush um, and this paint's really thick, so I'm gonna try my best to get it on there as good as, good as I can. But with an airbrush, it's possible to do like calligraphy. So you could do, you know, thick sprays and thin sprays um, within the same airbrush without having to do anything special. So this is kind of what made airbrush uh, popular back in the day is that you were able to spray, I can't do it with this paint, but oh, I'm trying. Trying a little bit. You get the point. This paint's really thick. But uh, you could do it thick to thin. Um, geez, that's... It looks horrible. Let me turn up this pressure a little bit. That's a lot better. Still trying to work through with the paint, but. As you can see, it goes from a thin line to thick line, a thin line to thick line, um, and that's what I would practice uh, to get your, you know, your dagger stroke incorporated into this. And I don't know who that is, they'll have to wait. So, you know, that's kind of what I would recommend. <clears throat> and the spectacular part is once you get the, the finger control down, then it's really easy to make lettering that looks like this, um, no problem. So from there, it would be to add a nice shading line. Right, right behind it. And if you've practiced this, I shouldn't have to explain this. And, and that's, that's, <laughs> that's the nature of the beast. But you don't have to do it this way. Uh, most, uh, most artists I've seen and noticed um, have switched to a, what's called a double line. So they'll make it thin like this and then they'll go back and thicken up those areas using a second line. And then you just shade in the inside of that, that second line. Give it the shadow. Damn. So there you go. That's a quick little explanation and good guide on how to get started. So if, if, if you happen to be the lucky one that wins the airbrush care package, this is a pretty good exercise to get you started with your brand new airbrush. Now, one thing I don't usually say or do on, on camera is cleaning out yeah. So here, and this is, thing is getting pretty heavy, I'm probably going to have to replace it soon, is my washout bottle. And as obviously you can tell, it's homemade, and, and the reason I home make these and stuff is because I just end up throwing them away once they get full like this. But this is a Hawaiian Tropic bottle, and all I did was cut out a hole right here, take off the lid, right, 
And so what happens when we go to wash out, we put the airbrush in here and you'll get a, a nice vapor coming off the top. Also having this lid off here makes it a quick and easy way to dump your extra paint into. Right? So if you have extra paint, you can just set the airbrush on there and you know, it comes right out. Also, <clears throat> they sell lots of airbrush cleaner, but one thing I recommend everybody do is get a water a bottle like this, a regular bottle. I know this has orange champ on it, but it's not. It's just water with a little bit of dish soap in it. The reason you have to get like one of these bottles to use it is because the, the it has to be this uh, pump here has to work with soap. So uh, you know, make sure you get yourself a good spray bottle. You can set your airbrush right over it and just spray out your cup. That'll get most of the paint out of there. Then spray some in there and spray it through. And then take some paper towels, clean up your airbrush. Nice, nice. All right, so the reason you want to keep it nice and clean is because this is actually the maintenance. Uh, after you're done using it, it is necessary that you clean your airbrush every time. Um, not not a question you know if if I should paint it or, or if I should clean it there's you know you could leave it with the lid on if you're gonna use it again in a few hours maybe even tomorrow you know but then eventually you will have to empty out that paint and, and flush out your airbrush you cannot just forget about the paint that's in there um, there is a way to clean it if you do but you see I just spray some more water with soap in there Kind of run it through, a little bit of blowback, so I put my finger right in front of that needle and pull a little bit of air with the trigger, get a little bit of blowback, and then finish that through. And you'll see all the steam coming off the top there. And that's it. All right, once you've uh, rinsed it out pretty good, you can take some reducer. I usually like reducer and uh, kind of running this through but putting the lid on it, shaking it. And the reason we shake it is because we want it to kind of like uh, get all the paint that might be stuck in front and in back of where the needle sits, right? So the, the Teflon packing is sits right here between the cup and the trigger. So we want to make sure we get any paint that might be sitting. <clears throat> so you want to make sure you always, always, always clean your airbrush. I know I don't show this on stream very often but every time I finish my stream I always go through and any airbrush I used gets the same treatment it gets rinsed out and we I sit here for a good 20 30 minutes sometimes just rinsing out my airbrushes um, and if you don't do this you'll end up with a nightmare right and an airbrush that won't work obviously and yeah, you'll just end up having a really bad time. So again, if you're the person that wins this, you must know to maintain your airbrush as clean as possible. I would treat it like a toothbrush. You know, like a toothbrush, you know, you walk up, you grab your toothbrush, you rinse it in the water, then you put the toothpaste on it, then you brush your teeth, and then when you're done, you rinse your toothbrush out again, same thing. You know, you can rinse it before you use it, spray your paint, do all that. Then you have to come back and rinse it out again, make sure it's nice and clean. And then I like to let it sit with a little bit of reducer in there, just so that any paint that might be left over doesn't dry up right away. Now I plan to use this again, probably more, more than likely tomorrow, which will be less than 12 hours from now. And uh, that's why I let it sit with reducer. If you're not gonna do that, Obviously, you want to make sure you flush it out very, very, very well. There's no paint in there. Get all the reducer out, clean it, and dry it up before you put it away. You make sure that it's dry before you put it away. Um, the reason is if you put it away with something wet in it, it could dry while you're putting it away, like while you have it away, and it could cause stuff to stick. 
So be careful. But yeah, these imperative, you must have one of these, even if it's just a cup with a little hole, it works just fine. Water with soap works great. Make sure you get yourself some reducer right away, some actual real reducer. Again, water is not a replacement for reducer. Water dries and takes a long time to dry. Reducer flashes over and you'll be able to see it actually dry like in, in, like in front of your face instead of watching it run or split or do anything like that. And most people that tell me they have problems, it's usually because they're not using reducer, they're using water or distilled water or whatever it is. Use proper reducer. I recommend 4011 or 4012 um, for your paints. Again, use good quality paints. I'm, you know, use a good quality airbrush. And in the most part, you'll end up, you'll end up in the right spot once you do all your practice. So again, let's just go over the airbrush package just so that we have it again for later on uh, when we look back in time. Once we're in the future sometime, we can look back at this and be like, wow, that was a pretty cool giveaway. So in this giveaway box, I've included the painting. I will set that right there. We got oh, the gorilla painting made it in there. Nice. My wife just throws stuff everywhere. You got the black and white cardstock paper. There's 10 sheets of each. And you actually get 15 sheets of black because in these. Right, there's the black paper in here is the same as that's in there. So you get all 10 of the Mike's brush stencils, right? All 10, so these are double-sided. This is the Skull Master Kit. The Skull Master Kit is on the back. So you get all 10. You're gonna get an Iwata Revolution, a genuine one. Got all the seals and everything. There is like, there is no questioning. This is a, a like legit one. When I got my Badger Sotar, I was so confused. This is like really nice. I love Iwata's packaging. They are the best. Like, so you're gonna get the, the Revolution Airbrush. I went out and bought a brand new hose. And I believe these hoses are 10 feet. Uh, they're really long. You can like airbrush pretty far away. This cool airbrush carrying case. Right, so I don't even have one of these, but this is pretty cool. It looks like it holds up to five airbrushes and it has a little pouch for like your, your spare parts in there. So, you know, again, I'll put the link in the, in the chat right now. If you're not signed up, make sure you go and you sign up right now. <clears throat> also, I want to sent over some stickers. So you get a couple of stickers um, and and I know for a fact that there's a sticker in here too. So you actually get three of these Iwata stickers. Actually, no, the other sticker looks like this with the red stripe. So you get two of these black stickers and you're gonna get one of those with the airbrush in there. Um, I know that for a fact because that's how my airbrush came. So I, I have faith that they actually package that the same. So you get those, you're gonna get all the hats the snapback hats here and I'll take one out there's six of them in here but these are nice snapback hats they're the trucker style with the mesh in the back you can see through they're really nice um, quality and it says here they're 100 percent polyester made in China so yeah you could uh, enjoy make some hats as practice with all your stencils also you're gonna get oh wait yeah, you're gonna get the Iwata keychain. So this thing is cool. I used mine already. They they sent over two, so I'm keeping one. Um, but you're gonna get this Iwata keychain. That's and I it's it literally says Iwata right on it, on the airbrush, and it's a bottle opener for you know all your bottles and stuff. So that's included in there. And I I went out and this is the one that I'm including. 
We're getting the Createx Primary Paint Set. Um, it includes bright red, bright yellow, bright blue, bright green, opaque white, and opaque black. And this one comes with Kent Lynn's How to Begin Airbrushing DVD. So I don't know if you guys know who Kent Lind is, but Kent Lind is a really good, really like, I've been watching Kent Lind since I was airbrushing and he's been doing t-shirts um, for a very long time. He's like the t-shirt master is what I would say at this point. Um, so yeah, you, you get that. Also, Iwata, no, we got all the Iwata stuff. Createx, right, on their own. Once the winner is chosen, I'm going to send the address and the name over to Createx. And they are going to send out another primary paint set. So you'll basically have four ounces of every color. So these are two ounce bottles. You'll get another two ounce bottle of every color um, straight from Createx. They're going to send that out directly to you. Also, Mr. HD Stencils, uh, Gerardo, over there at HD Stencils. Um, so instead of, uh, instead of doing a three stencil kit, they have decided to, or he decided to do a $150, um, gift certificate. Uh, so you could go in on their website and get anything you want, or you could even order custom stencils, um, up to $150 worth of anything you like. So if you want to try out their stencils, uh, obviously if you win, uh, you'll, you'll get to try them out for, for free, um, but you'll get $150 worth and they're going to cover the shipping on that. So if you win and you're like in across the ocean or something, they will also cover the shipping on that. Um, so yeah, that's a lot of stuff, my guys, like whoever wins, it, it's going to be a lot. <clears throat> so... Hopefully you guys like all that. I'm gonna go here on the chat and read some chats. You want the keychain? Yeah, the keychain's pretty dope. Where's my keys at? I'll show it to you. Oh, oh, jeez. See, there's my keys. It says I water right around the side. It's not gonna focus, but it says it on both sides. I water, and it has a cool this keychain part here, this bottle opener part. It's pretty dope, I'm not gonna lie. So, <clears throat> that's that. Uh, what am I missing? I feel like I'm forgetting something. I don't know, I think that's it. <clears throat> Honestly, it's a quite a bit of stuff. You were wondering where you got that on your Instagram story. Yeah, I got it straight from Iwata. They sent that over. You want to airbrush? I want to only cheap's airbrush. Have never how much there because in uh, what Fernando, you should just pull in español, way. <laughs> Please don't touch my stuff. <laughs> it's in four hours. Yeah, it's it's ending soon. I think it's at midnight uh, it, tonight that it actually draws the winner. I will be asleep. So tomorrow morning, uh, you could either expect a, a post or a quick video announcing the winner. Um, I'm obviously going to just say their name. Um, I can't like, you know, I'm not going to go and be like, this is their email, their address. No, I, I'm just going to get on here, show the winner. And, you know, we all can congratulate him again. Don't be hating on him or anything like that. Um, you know, and good luck to everybody. I hope. You know, if I could, I'd give each and one of you an airbrush, um, but that's 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 a pipe dream that'll probably never ever happen. Um, but hopefully, just helping out one of you with this giveaway. This giveaway, I'm doing one one winner. Um, maybe on the next one, we could do a bunch of winners um, and give out you know maybe each individual thing to somebody, uh, so that way we can have multiple winners and everybody gets a chance to win something. But for this one. You know, yeah, him or her who wins is you're gonna have like the ultimate airbrush setup, like for starters. Um, so let's break down the value of all this stuff, right? So the airbrush is about a hundred dollars. The hose was, I believe, twenty-five bucks. So that's like hundred and twenty-five bucks. The the paper here, that's that's not much. I'm not even gonna count that. The whole 
kit, right? The whole 10 stencils um, is valued at $150. So I sell these for $20 a piece. You could order the whole set for $150. So that's $150 on top of the $120. That's what, $270. This painting here, I value at about $100. Um, it's fine art. It's done on a hard uh, water paper board, a crescent board. Um, so this is about $100. That's $370. These hats are about 5 bucks a piece. So there's uh, six of them. That would be $30. That's what, $400 worth of stuff. This is about $25, bucks, $425. And who's going to price this real quick? I don't know how much that is. Um, but I, I would put it around 25 bucks, 20 bucks, 25 bucks, somewhere around there. So it's like $450 right there. The keychain, I don't even know if they sell these. I'm pretty sure these are like priceless. I don't know if you could actually buy these or not. I think they've just been giving them, giving them away as like prizes. So, you know, yeah, I don't know what to put the price on that. Maybe 10 bucks. I don't know. I would pay 10 bucks for that for sure if I seen it somewhere. And then the stickers, I don't know. I'm not going to put a price on that. Uh, so that's what, 450 460 something like that. And then, you know, you're going to get another Createx primary paint set. That's going to be another 25 bucks. Uh, so that's what, 500 475 and then HD Stencils is throwing in the $150 gift certificate. So that's $500 and what? $625 uh, worth of stuff here. Yeah, plus the box, plus shipping wherever you live and everything. Like if you want to add all that shit. I'm just, the actual value of the stuff inside and the, the what you're going to win is about $625. So, bro. I just want to say thank you guys, thank all of you guys for making it all possible. Thank uh, HD Stencils, thank you Iwata, thank you Createx uh, again for helping this little channel put this big giveaway all together. Thank you all you guys for being part of the community. Um, obviously here we're not looking for the most views. I'm not looking to make you know catchy thumbnails that just you know whatever or clickbait videos. Or whatever like that we airbrush I airbrush all kinds of stuff so if you like airbrushing hopefully we can get some of you guys to stick around join us in the chats join us in the live streams I live stream just about every day now I'm trying to work on a schedule for live streaming so that it's not so uh, random I guess and you guys could kind of know when I'm gonna go live um, but again just know that all this stuff is possible thanks to you guys um, you know, and the more that we make the channel grow, that's what all this was about. Was trying to make the channel grow to give one of you guys, make you guys feel lucky, give back. You know, all the stuff that I feel, give back to you guys, and make one of you guys feel as lucky as me, um, and get all the growth going so that we can make it happen again and again and again. Um, you know, in the future. So, thank all you guys for watching. Um, you know, James, all the guys of the Skull Squad. James, Justice, Abismael, Heather, um, Easy Airbrush, Air Todd. How can I forget Air Todd? James Melton, everybody, everybody that's part of the Skull Squad. Bill, I think Bill's still part of the Skull Squad. Boy, he's still out there lurking. He's just in the shadows, in the shadows. It's smooth. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, thank all of you guys. And, if, again, if you like this video, if you want to see more videos like this, please click like subscribe to the channel and if you really like the videos and you think you've learned enough and you want to see more consider becoming a member of the skull squad down below click that join button check it out it helps bring more giveaways more videos more how to airbrush more answering your questions all that stuff in the chat um and i do it i really do it because i like to because i don't make this does not make that much money i make money off of the paintings you know, so yeah, if this was like, I need to get paid, it was like, yo, that was a while ago. I've been doing this for hours and hours and years and years. And yeah, I'm not ever, ever going to get that back. But it, the, I just enjoy chatting with you guys. It's fun to me. And that's why I do it. And, you know, it makes me feel like lucky. And here's me spreading some of the luck back to you guys. 
So, again, thank you guys all for watching today. I'm going to go out. Me and Violet going to go out and get some ice cream for her birthday and uh, enjoy the rest of her birthday. She crashed out. We were out running around, and she's crashed out on the couch. So I have to wake her up, um, wait for Jess to get home, and we're going to go get some ice cream, enjoy the rest of our night. Hopefully, you guys can all do the same. And in the morning, I'll get on. I'll announce the winner. Good luck to all, every one of you again. And we'll see you guys next time. Later.